All right, today's rehab is about stretching for runners. So for those of you who are now stuck at home and no gym, no workouts, and are doing a lot more running than you're used to, or if you haven't been running before and you are now running, these are the essential stretches that you've just got to start doing, otherwise you're going to start running to some serious injuries down the track, and we don't want that. So I'm going to run through some hip flexor stuff, some quads, some hammies, some glutes, and some calves that are what I call just essential stretches that if you're a, a seasoned runner or if you're a starting out runner, these are the ones you've got to do. Now, listen, you can do all sorts of stretches under the sun, but as long as you cover these, it's a great start. And this is for when you're at home or even when you're out in a park, running around to do the stretches then or at home with no equipment apart from what you've got at home. So the first one, quads. Now, I would just do this with your sofa. You need a bit of a pillow underneath your knee though because it's just going to be too hard on a hard floor onto your kneecap. So use a pillow underneath your knee. Now for this one, what you're trying to aim to do, if I show you this way, is when you come down onto your knee, this foot's got to be elevated up and you've got to put it back on something. Now, you can do all sorts of things with your foot to try and change the angle here, as long as you're getting a stretch down the front of the leg. Now, don't make the mistake of just lunging forward and going to here and trying to get a bit of a hip flexor stretch. This one, I actually want you to come back into this position here and then tilt your pelvis back that way. So it's the old classic posterior tilt. Use your glute to do that and squeeze that hard. Draw your abs in here to really pull that pelvis up and then you're going to get that rectus femoris type stretch, the really grunty one in the front of the quads. Now, one to two minutes, you've just got to hold this on. And trust me, this is one of the exercises that will really help you. If you're starting to get knee troubles, a little bit of niggles and knee pains around the knee from running, this is what you need to start working on, priority number one. Um, so work on your quads. If you're going to do anything, at least work on your quads, right? So that one definitely is a big must for you. Now, you also got to work on hip flexor. Now what you can start doing, I'll give you some sort of three grades because they sort of blend the two together. With your hip flexor, same thing, work on your pillow, go into your classic sort of lunge type kneeling stretch. Now, at this point here, people go, I can't feel anything. And they tend to go straight forward into there and do a bit of a split type stretch. I try and avoid that. I try and isolate your psoas a little bit better by coming up and having this vertical with your body, right? And then what you've got to try and do is again, same tilt back into there and really pull on your hamstring and pull on your glute. Okay, so turn those two on and lift up your core to stretch just the front in there. Now, for some people, that's going to be a huge stretch. For others, you might have to move forward a bit, but don't lose that tilt when you go forward. So keep that movement there and then keep it on and then come forward until you feel like you just can't go any further. Or if you're going to go any further, it's going to drop. And that's really important to try and get isolate the stretch up into the hip flexor because if you're running, doing a lot of work in your hip flexors, then that stretch is going to be essential for you. And especially with someone with the glutes that are not so good, when you're running, you're probably going to be doing more hip flexor work. So stretching them out is really, really important besides working on your glute strength. Okay, so there's your two first ones. Now, that hip flexor stretch, if you're a bit more advanced than that, you're a bit more flexible, you can advance that further okay, and go into a hip flexion stretch. So if I was doing the left one, I'd now come down into this position here. Now we've covered this in a previous video for a while back. This hip flexion stretch is sort of the advancement of that because you're going to get in some groin stuff. So if you're a bit of a serious runner, you might want to start working on this one. If I show you this way, it's this way here, into that position there. So knee out, dropping forward into there, all right? And this one, you can really relax through the front, just let that go make sure you're hanging on the front. Okay, so it's a really, really good stretch, but it is an advancement of the other one before. So if you want to take that one step further, I would add on your quad stretch that you're doing before into your hip flexion stretch. So imagine you go back into your quad stretch like that. Okay, so get that up onto a something up high and then come forward into your quad stretch. Now imagine you need a bit of flexibility for this, but this one really hammers through the front here, plus you get the combine there. So perhaps you're a little bit short of time, perhaps you're a little bit more flexible, that one's a little bit sort of advancing. But start off on the other ones first, then maybe work towards that one, eh? So that's your hip flex, your quad stuff, okay? Now your glute work, what I work on with glutes is start off entry level stuff just trying to stretch it against the wall, because you need to work on your glute work 
because it's so important for when you're running. And remember, your glutes attach to the ITB, and so many people get ITB type sort of pain around the knee, and a lot of times because they're so damn tight in the glutes. Start off stretching them out, see if that works for you. So get rid of the pillow, well, you know what? You have the pillow for your head. But what you need is something solid, okay? So you need to go to a wall like that and work on this stretch here and there. So you can see you can just get yourself lined up, just lift yourself up with that foot, come up, tuck that one over, drop down, okay? And then you've got your glute stretch in that position there, all right? So I'm sort of in a nice flex position, so it's okay to be in this flexion position if you don't have a back problem, and then work on that side stretching in there. It's a really nice, easy stretch that you can just do lying down. You can do it in the park, wherever you are, in that position, just try and stretch that out, okay? So that's an essential one for your glute. Now, if you find that one is just way too easy, and you're a bit more flexible, go up into sort of more of a bench top like this. So if you can try, get something a little bit higher, this might be a wall or something outside, come have a look at this, is you go up and do the stretch in this position, okay? So put your foot up into that 90 degree position and then lean forward on the bench like that. Now this is going to target you here again, all right? But with this one, what you're trying to aim for is to not roll down like that. You're trying to actually be upright and then put some sort of pressure through your foot and you can drop that knee out if you like, bend the knee, just trying to drop your body down but keep your lower back straight okay so not rounded try and keep your lower back straight if you keep your lower back straight it's going to give you a posterior tilt which will target you better into that back of the hip better glute stretch with that okay so and that's your glute one now hammies they're a little bit tricky and a little bit controversial hammies some people say oh i've got really tight hammies but it might be a more of a postural pelvic issue or a core control issue that you need to sort out and that's why the hamstrings are hanging on. So some people stretch the heck out of their hamstrings but it's not the hamstring that's the problem, it's the core that's the problem. If your core is okay and you're just stretching out your hamstrings because you're doing a lot of running and, you, and you, they're feeling tight, then work on this, okay? Go back into your lunge position, hand down into here, all right? same sort of position, then what you do is you push that back into that position there. So you're trying to keep your back straight as much as you can to try and get the belly of that front hamstring stretched out. All right? So weight down through your hands, push your pelvis back and try and posterior tilt here, try and drive that backwards into that position trying to straighten out your lower back rather than round down like that. You're trying to be in a, a tilt position that way and just lengthening out here. The trick is keep the bend in the knee and you'll take away any side tension issues that you've got. Hammies, pretty easy stuff. I would always include your hammies in with your glute and your quads. It's a very forgotten sort of muscle. People find it's too hard to stretch. I would definitely work on that because guess what? You use your hammies when you're running and you're walking, so you need to stretch them out if they're getting tight. Now your last ones, calves, essential. Remember, runners use their calves heaps. We see so many calf injuries from runners being far too tight and ankle problems. So there's two types. One is working on your long calf stretch. Now all you need is really just a bit of a step going on. So something that puts your foot down on that angle. So see, have a look at that. So when you're from there, you just need to be in that position. Okay, so something that's got your heel lower than your foot. And if you grab onto a pole or something like that, what I'd do is keep that knee straight. Okay, so use your quads, keep that knee straight. And then when you come upwards, step forward with your right foot, well, your, other, your front, the other foot, and then you're trying to keep the weight down through the back heel and push that heel as though you're dropping it down through the floor, keeping your knee straight. If your knee bends, you're not going to stretch the top of your gastroc, okay? So you've got to keep your knee straight, and that'll get the top part here, okay? Really nice, the top back part of the knee, and then just come forward to the point where you feel like almost your heel is going to come off. But you've got to try and really focus on the weight down through the heel, okay? So crucial that you just focus on weight through the heel and then you can come forward. Don't take weight off that heel. So that's for your upper calf. Now, a lot of people have issues in their ankles. Maybe it's an old ankle sprain, that sort of thing. So with the ankle one, what I work on there is step back into the sort of lunge position if you're doing the front angle and then just push that forward. Now that's a really easy one to do. Again, you've elevated this front part of the foot. That's the crucial part. If you don't have something like that, you can do it against the wall, against the pole, this sort of thing, where you lock your foot in 
and just drive that knee forward. Now you're aiming for ankle range here, but also a little bit, you'll feel it in that Achilles, a little bit of Achilles stretch, um, and that's normal. But just don't push it too far and get any pinching in the front. Right, so that's a lot. But remember, these are entry level stretches. These are the ones that you should, just should be doing regardless if you're doing, a, if you're a runner anyway, or if you're doing a lot more running than you're used to, or you're starting running, get stuck into these because it's gonna be one, make you feel a little bit better when you're running, but also work on your injury prevention and also tackle a few of those little niggles that you might be starting to get. All right, see you next time.